Big shout to the ghosts and the ghost sets. On this episode, we sit down with Cliff, the national president of the Red Rum MC. We talk about indigenous motorcycle clubs. We talk about him recruiting Jason Momoa into the club. We talk about him sitting down in the United Nations with a cut on, and we get into it on this episode of Demons Road TV. And no, yeah. We ghosting, baby. Shout out to the ghosts and the ghost sets. Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost. I'm your host for the evening. And today we sit down with Cliff, the national president of the Red Rum MC. It was a pleasure and an honor. And, and how lucky am I? as a profession to get to sit down with the caliber of the type of people that I've been meeting and getting to sit down with. We go over everything in this interview, but the first thing I want you to do, like we always do on this channel, is to hit me with that pound ghost in. And that lets me know you're alive and well, sitting on tools, doing what you do, or just part of the Demon's Row community one of my ghosts big shout to all my new subscribers welcome to the row make sure you hit that bell so you get the notification hit the like button shout to everybody that's been copping the ghost in boat neckline t-shirts and let's get into it first and foremost thank you for sitting down with me it's a pleasure um just basically i wanted to start this off by giving the base knowledge about indigenous clubs um, a lot of people don't understand the different layers of the culture. So, you know, as you know, that's what we do on Demons Row TV. So can you explain to us a little bit about what an indigenous club is? Yeah, you know, um, you know, indigenous, you know, there's different levels of indigenous clubs. Just like there's different levels of, of motorcycle clubs. You know, there are, um, you know, if you, if you go to, uh, down under, so to speak, you know, Australia, New Zealand, you know, there's some hardcore indigenous clubs down there, you know, um, hardcore. Um, uh, you know, we kind of roll in a, in a little a bit of a different circle. And then there are, there, you know, there are indigenous clubs that, that are MCs or IMCs, uh, um, you, know, you know, depending, you know, we, we are an MC. Um, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, most of the indigenous clubs uh, all bring some form of their tradition and culture, even if they're a one percent club, you know, even some of the indigenous one percent clubs um, uh, outside of, of the United States, um, they bring some form of their traditional culture into into that circle, into that world. You know, for us, uh, our traditions and culture are almost one hundred percent about how we roll and move. You know, of course, we you know we we support the. The motorcycle community and, and do some of these you know sort of things as well but the main thing in the main way that we roll um is supporting our indigenous communities supporting our sacred sites supporting um our elders and you know and trying to keep it keep it within those circles you know so tell me a little bit about how you got into the motorcycle world like a lot of people know you you're well known all across the world you know the club is, you know, I've looked online and did my homework and research, and there's a lot of respect that comes with your name. So how did it all begin for you in the motorcycle world? Well, I mean, you know, I, actually my, my father was the, the president of the Zorros, and the Zorros were, you know, if you, like the, the West Side Story, the movie West yeah. Side Story is really based on that. My father was the leader of the, 
the Zorros, which were, was the only, you know, there were a bunch of buildings in, in Columbus Circle where Puerto Ricans lived. And, you know, if they crossed uh, uh, 57th Street, they were in Hell's Kitchen. If they crossed 72nd Street, you know, they were fighting the Italian dudes. And so the, the basis of, of, of West Side Story is really based on my father's gang, the Zorros, you know, and they wore white sweaters with, with you know, burgundy stripes and a big Z on the back, you know, it's trippy. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, I grew up in, in sort of in the life, you know, um, and uh, I got my first Honda 50. My father walked in the door. I must have been about six years old. He rolled a, he rolled a Honda 50. My dad wasn't into bikes at all. But is this in Spanish Harlem or is this in Brooklyn? No, this is in Brooklyn. Oh, so okay. I grew up in Brooklyn. Okay. But my, you know, my father was from, from you know, Columbus Circle, which is, which is the west side of Manhattan, you know. Okay. Um, the other side, Spanish Harlem is the east side, so it was the west side, you know, so... And, uh, you know, so I grew up with, you know, sort of that sort of understanding and then, you know, just living in Brooklyn in the 70s, 80s and 80s and, you know, early 90s and late 60s, you know, you, I mean, the Sunset Park is, uh, is you know, the gang haven of Brooklyn, you know, yeah. and, um, and so, you know, we always, you, you couldn't live it during them times and not move in those circles, you know, um, and, uh, I learned a lot, you know, I learned a lot, uh. Um, and then I got into the, you know, the MC world, I got into the, you know, 1% world, and then, um, <clears throat> and, uh, into the race bike scene, you know, and then, uh, and then graduated myself into, uh, really in, engulfing myself in my traditions and culture, and running a, a Native Arts Council, uh, and then bringing that all together, you know, bringing the, 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 the work in the Native community, and then saying, hey man, you know, <clears throat> how can I get my love for biking and the people who love you know motorcycle riding and bring that together into um serving my community you know as in, as an indigenous person you know as a boricua person as a taino person as a quechua person like so how can i bring all that together and uh you know did you feel like that as a one percenter was that always inside you or did you, were you young and into the streets so you didn't see it till you got older? Like, how, what was that transition? I mean, look, I, you know, you you grow up in the street, you're, you're, you know, if you grow up in the street and you move in the street, you're in 1% life, you know, back especially back in the day. Yeah. Um, then I lived with the most gangster dude I ever met in my life. I mean, my dad's 85 and he's still like, yeah. he's still, you know, um... And so, growing up in, in that household, you know, it's this kind of like, and, and you know, not not by any means was I like abused or anything. You know, they were, you know we were three brothers. We were bad, and we, we were bad. We got the shit kicked out of us. That's it, man. That's how it was back in the day. Yeah, you know? yeah. I wasn't abused. I wasn't, you know. But you know, when my dad came in the door, it was like smoking Joe Frazier, you know, bobbing <laughs> and weaving, <laughs> and uh, that's just how it was back then, you know. Yeah. So, um, so these circles, you know, when were never really anything different than me and then for most cats growing up in, you know back then if you were in the street you know so what nationality are you so i'm i'm boricua puerto rican okay um and then my indigenous roots are quechua and uh, taino so walk us through starting red rum mc what was going through your mind what was the process because you guys have a very outlaw look and i know you're about community how was that beginning process going on your own and starting the Red Rum MC? You know, I just felt like, you know, it was another mission, you know, and I felt like, you know, when I, I did that when I was younger, you know, I was much younger. And so, you know, now I'm kicking 60, you know, and so um, I'm in a different, I'm in a different mindset, you know, and I've been in yeah. this, this mindset for, for a long time where I wanted to serve my community. I wanted to have a, a bigger picture and a bigger uh sort of put out there a, 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 a what I was feeling from within me, you know, and and, and so um, the, the idea of, of Red Rum came, you know, in the beginning Red Rum wasn't, uh, you know, the club it was now, we were Red Rum crew, it was a different logo, it was a different patch, and then, uh, you know, I had this vision of, uh, um, that came to me, and I woke up and I, and I quickly drew um, the story of the patch and the circle, which was the earth. So, you know, our patch, you know, tells a story, you know, it's a circle of the earth, um, 
and then there's seven stars in these bandanas, and that represents the seven generations. You know, indigenous people believe in seven generations, how we live, um, how we treat our children, the way we teach our children, what, um, both negative and positive. These things will continue for seven generations. You know, how our leaders should lead, should always be thinking, you know, is there gonna be clean water for my children's 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 children? children you know and that's yeah. so that's an indigenous mindset seven generations and then in here are the story of four so there's four directions there's four seasons there's four things that grow the root the stem the leaf the fruit of a tree there's four creatures of the earth those that swim those that fly those that walk those that crawl and so four is a significant number you know so you know we put four stars in these bandanas and then in here there's these little peace signs and that's, you know, always to, you know, put peace out first, you know, and that's, you know, that's how I roll, you know, is yeah. that um, try to resolve everything peacefully first. You know, we're men, you know, we're all men, you know, all men, but the men, who, we, we are men and, and sometimes we have to, you know, do the things that we have to do to protect ourselves, protect our families, but always, you know, the mindset of being peaceful first. And so You have no females in the club, right? No, we have a sister club called Red Spirit. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, and then that's our, our sister club, and they're in RC. Oh, um, okay. Single patch RC. Okay. Um, but uh, Red Rum is, and, and we created that because, you know, we, we, we have a thing called tolerance and compassion, like a lot of sayings within the club. And I remember getting some emails from some women that were like, tolerance my ass, man. You don't even let women in there, you know? <laughs> and we were like, yo, I think we need to address this. So yeah. we created a, a women's club for, for indigenous and indigenous minded women. Um, and so Red Spirit is the name of that. So did um, you have a crew of people that you grew up with and that's how you started Red Rum or? Um, I, well, my, my youngest brother, um, who was uh, riding at the time, and he was in, in LOD um, at the time. And so, you know, I rolled with him. Um, and then so uh, LOD was sort of like, um, you know, I always look at it as like, you know, some of the brothers there are like, you know, it's like our, our race bike, um, you know, partner you know brother club like, yeah you know we, yeah, we had, yeah you know yeah because you you i always say you if you don't acknowledge where you came from then you don't know where you're going yes. you know and so we give you know mad props to our brothers in lod because um red rum was formed from lod you know so me and my brother we started a nomad chapter at lod and then from lod we 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 moved off and started red rum so for 13 and a half um, originally was, you know, I, I came up with that concept and we were the first ones to put 13 and a half in a diamond on a, on a vest. I didn't come up with the concept of 13 and a half. That had been around a long time, but you know, I had the mindset of saying, Hey man, I want to put that on a vest, you know, because I believe in that philosophy. Um, so you created the 13 and a half diamond? Because I know there was the, the 13, right. but Thir you created the, the 13 and a half. The diamond on a, on a vest, yeah. Okay. And so I created that, and, and LOD, even to this day, still uses it. And then we took it, you know, I, I gave it to LOD, the leadership of the club, which I was part of, um, dug it. And then so then we, uh, you know, so when we, we branched off and started Red Rum, we took the, you know, the diamond and put it, put it on, on us. So I, I introduced that to LOD probably, I would say, 2005 or 2000, yeah, maybe. So I know like when 1% clubs, like new 1% clubs come out and, and once, you know, one of the bigger clubs sees they got that diamond, automatically it's an issue. Was it an issue in the beginning with the 13 and a half or were the relationships already there? Or? It's an issue to this day. When we start new chapters, it's an issue to this day. You know, I discourage any club that's not built for conversation and for standing up with what they believe um, in, not in a physical way, but in, in a way that they can converse in, 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 you know, with the sentiment of, of, uh, uh, of, of believing in what you're putting out, you know? Yeah. Because it ain't, you know, ain't, you put a diamond on, you better have a, a good reason for it and a good, so, you know, for us, um, when we when we speak to, and especially when there's new places that we're, we're, we're starting chapters in, it's a conversation, man, because you're putting a diamond on, 
Yeah. And and a lot of guys have given their lives up for these diamonds, you know. So how expansive is Red Rum? Because I see it like in Spain and like places yeah. that, you know, yeah. how, like, where are you guys located? Are you guys like all over the world? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're in Australia. Um, we're in, uh, in Germany, in Spain, in Morocco, uh, wow. in France. Um, and, uh, um, and then we have, you know, hang around chapters in, in, in other European countries that in, and in conversation with other European countries um, and even, in, in, you know, some Africa. Well, we are in Africa. We're in Morocco. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's delicate, you know, because for us, you know, guys have got to, you know, I, I guess it's easier when you're in a club and you just you go, all right, th these are some hard hitting dudes, man. Let's put them in the club. But for us, it's like, well, hold on a second, man. Are these the right cats for us? Yeah. Do they think the way we think? Are they, you know, are they thinking about the things that are important to us, like caring about uh, the planet, caring about the community? You know, we we've stood up uh, on on many sacred sites, you know, uh, with our indigenous, uh, you know, brothers and sisters at Standing Rock and Line 3 at Mount Achaia, um, uh, at uh, Oak Flats. And these are all indigenous sacred sites where people are standing up to defend, to, you know, to stop whether it's fracking or, or uh, 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 pipelines. You know, these are the things that are important to us as a club, you know. How does it feel to have something that you started in Brooklyn, because I feel like New York creates a lot, and a lot of times we don't always get the credit. How does it feel for you to start something in Brooklyn and then see it in France, in Spain, in you know, Morocco? I mean, cat, cats ask me that all the time, you know, and I just can't roll with my ego first, you know, because I, I, I feel like, you know, cats go, oh man, you must be proud, you guys are, and I'm, I, all I think about is all the work, you know, yeah. like, dudes, you got no idea, yeah. you know, and so, and then also from the mindset of you, sure, you could spark some interest um, with something in people, mm -hmm. but those people, you know, so I always look at a farmer, you know, like, if you, if you got a giant farm, sure, you can go out and plant them seeds, but you need people who are going to cultivate it, who are going to uh, 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 pick the crops, who are going to work the farm and care for the farm as well. You know, you yeah. might be the dude who threw the seeds, but man, there's a lot of other work going on after them seeds begin to grow. And so that's where I look at, you know, a club, you know, and that's why, I, you know, I don't wear national president, founder, like none of that stuff, you know, because for me... It's it's no ego trip, you know. It's it's all just you know putting in work and uh, not the traditional work of the MC. You know, when we yeah. say putting in work, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, different, yeah. it's a different kind of work. But um, yeah, it's it's a big responsibility, you know. So let me ask you a question because people have asked this: Can you be a white person and be in an indigenous club? Yeah, we. I mean, we. The, if you you know, listen in our traditions. Um, and and you know, as as indigenous people, um, we never looked at color. You know, you could look at the journals um, of, of of the transcripts actually that people have written. Um, that you know, many indigenous uh, uh, leaders um, had, had had spoke about um, when Europeans first came here, and and most of the most of it were always. That you look, at, you look at the Wampanoags when the Pilgrims first arrived. They wanted to adopt all of them. You know, they they just wanted them to behave themselves and act like Wampanoags. You know, like yo, we should adopt all these these white people because um, they didn't look at the color of the skin. They looked at them as human beings. It yeah. was only after the, the actions which they had. And so that's the kind of way we look at like, you know, if you're an ally, if you care for the planet, if you care, if you want to roll with us to a powwow, and if you then, then by all means, you know, um, and we also encourage dudes to look into their traditions and look into their culture and look into, uh, you know, like we got a whole German chapter that have, have tr you know, traced themselves to their Germanic tribes, you know, and Germany with tribes, you know, we yeah. were talking about uh, that movie uh, Gladiator, you yeah. know, you see that scene in Gladiator where the German tribes are fighting the Romans. But, you know, the Germans were, were nomadic people. And you look at, at like, R Russian people, you know, and, 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 and the Siberian tribes, you know, yeah. um, that still to this day, you know, are there. So we always encourage people. Everyone is indigenous to somewhere. 
you know. Yeah. And I think when you connect to your land and you connect to your people, um, then you 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 you're fostering an understanding of community, and that's really what we do, you know. The reason why I wanted to sit down with you is because you made me realize when I was watching the interview that you did with um I forgot the name of the guy, but he was from Canada, and um. You actually were saying, you know, from the Taino side, I'm Puerto Rican. I never looked at it as indigenous. I looked at it as, you know, Hispanic, you know. And then you really brought me back to, like, the roots of, like, I got to do some soul searching about some stuff. So I appreciate that. That's why I wanted to interview you. Um, also, a lot of people have asked, of course, you know, the elephant in the room. We did the video about Jason Momoa right, right, right. being a member of your club, right. you know, that's a pretty big deal. How did that all come about? In the bike world, you know, it's a lot of the, the things I discuss are in common, things to discuss, you know, that people really understand or know about. But, you know, in, in, in on the on the big island of Hawaii, um, there's a telescope being raised um, on the top of Mount Akea, which is the highest mountain in the world from the seafloor. And they're building an 18-story telescope there. And... Um, and the native Hawaiian people, the Kanaka Maori people, um, have been been fighting this. You know, there was a camp there, and so I, you know, Red Rum has been up there twice. And in our journeys up there, um, we, uh, the grandmother of our club, our elder, you know, in our traditional ways, um, you know, our grandmothers are like our guides. You know, so this whole club of men, you know, hundreds and hundreds of men all over the world have, and and God. Uh, you know, rest her soul, but Auntie LaDonna, who just passed away, who was the founder, one of the founders of Standing Rock Movement, that had that, another movement, um, and Auntie LaDonna, uh, and uh, Auntie Pua, who's the leader of the Mauna Kea Movement, um, she's our grandmother, she's the club's grandmother, and, you know, that's a big responsibility when you have an elder and a grandmother checking you, you know, yeah, like, we yeah. went to Sturgis and I get a phone call and she's like, you know, back in, in 2020, you know, during the pandemic, and, we, you know, a few of us rolled out there, and I rolled out there, and she's like, I hope you ain't, you know, you know, she's like, Cliff, I hope you ain't at any of them, you know, concerts, I don't want to see no pictures up or nothing, I said, no, nah, man, we're, you know, we're in the mountains, we're on the res, we're, you know, we're not moving in those, those areas, you know, she was like, okay, you know, so, I, yeah. you know, when you got that kind of thing. Um, so Auntie Pua uh, is is the elder and 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 Mount Akea. So when we went to Hawaii, when I first went there in 2015, I connected with Auntie Pua. She's also, you know, what we call our aunties. You know, she's also the auntie of Jason Momoa. Oh. Okay. And so you know, Jason took an interest in the club. You know, if you ever if you go on his pa his pages, you know, he's an avid motorcycle rider. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, he's just a down to earth guy. You know. Um, he expressed an interest in the club, you know, and, and uh, we had, a, I mean, we had a long conversation, man. I mean, he called me, I was, I was traveling through California, and uh, we were probably on the phone for like an hour and a half, and he just grilling me question after question after question. Um, and I never, you know, I never had, I never said to him, yo, you want to join nothing? He just was asking me, asking me, asking me. He was like, uh, you know, and then maybe a week later he called me again, and he's like, "Yeah, we're at the top." You know, he, I mean, his personality, you know, is his, you know that's how he rolls. You know, yeah, like, there's no, yeah. he's like, "Yo, what's up, you know, man?" You know, he's yeah. asking me, and so um, you know, I try to answer his questions as best as he could. He had the blessing of Auntie Pooh, obviously, because Auntie Pooh is the you know the grandmother of our club, and, and she's our auntie. You know, and so um, and um, he was interested. He was like, "Yo, I want to get down with this." Um, I was like, all right, cool, you know, uh, you know, um, and, you know, he wasn't instantly like, guys are like, he didn't prospect, he didn't, he, he, he didn't rock up a, a vest until after six months. Our, 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 you know, our minimum prospect period in, in our club is six months, minimum. Mm -hmm. A guy, I think, I think there's a, I think there's a dude going on two years somewhere that yeah, just yeah. hasn't done the work, you yeah, know. But that's yeah, the yeah. minimum, you know, yeah. absolute minimum. Um, and did you know? Did Jason go and 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 you know when we went into go, go have a few beers? Did he watch the bike somewhere? No, absolutely not. I mean, the guy, you know, guys filming movies, the guys. But the simple fact that a celebrity of that caliber wants to, to join hundreds and hundreds of guys all over the world and put on himself what they're wearing and be be the representative of that and then be the representative of him 
because that's really what you do when you're in an MC, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're representing each other. You know, one. So, so, um, you know, that in itself. Uh, but he 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 put in he 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 did a few things in, during his prospect period that were just like heavy duty, like yeah. heavy duty to earn his cut. You yeah. know, something that. He did a few things and had nothing to do with a monetary, uh, uh, his money, or had nothing to do with his um, status of, of who he is or what he is. Um, but he, he did something for the club and opened up some doors and so on and so forth, um, you know, that had really nothing to do with that. It, it just, it, it was, but it was work. And, and uh, so, long story short, yeah, he, he, uh, he, he prospected in that way. You know, and so I see, you know, I saw some of the things that I was like, he didn't buy it. Yeah. He prospected in the way that he could. Yeah. You know, um, we do, you know, the nomads in the club are either uh, international officers, um, some of the old school guys, um, or, you know, the, the, I hate to use the word hierarchy of the club, but, you know, the guys that are, are running stuff, you know, yeah. um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a patch that you have to earn. One of the things is he has a nomad patch, and you know, for us it was first of all, have you seen his videos, man? You see the one where he's sleeping on his bike in the desert, like he's yeah. like, like this dude isn't lives the nomadic life. Yeah. Like even just talking to him, like I talked to him, yo, where you at now? You know, he's like, oh, I'm, you know, at this place or that place. It's very rarely some glamorous spot. You know, he's, you know, he's if he if he can get out, you know, and and ride his ride his bike, you know, through the desert or whatever, he yeah. he'd do that before he, you know, be at some glamorous place, you know. I seen him like with the uh, I don't know what it is that they put on their hands, like the powder or whatever, and then he's like climbing. Oh, rock climbing, so, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, he's very into nature. I see that. Yeah. So it was like a perfect fit with the club. Yeah. I but, think that we need to embrace and support a brother, not hate on a brother. This is a problem. With a lot, and I call it, it's it's a beta kind of way of thinking, like talking about another brother or talking down a brother. I don't I don't respect that. If someone's doing something, they're dreaming big, they're reaching goals. We need to support them as a community, you know, not not allow negativity to be spoken towards them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, when you know, when it, you know, and, and that's a thing with that. You know, I I never thought I'd see a day when people are trying to cancel bikers. When yeah. other bike, I mean, we're in this cancel culture as it is, yeah. but I'm seeing, you know, not just on our man, but, you know, uh, other, yeah. like, bikers try to cancel other bikers, yeah. you know, like, yeah, look, you know, I don't, we don't roll, and I, I definitely don't roll in, in those, you know, sorts of circles, uh, I feel like empowerment is everything, you know, um, and, you know, you could always look at every single situation in your life in a negative way. You know, but there's power in positivity yeah. and there's power in uplifting your brother, you know, and um, that's always been, you know, sort of the mentality that I put forth, you know, Jason uh, and, and, and I think Patrick, what's that cat's name? Patrick, Robert Patrick. Robert Patrick. He's another celebrity who joined the motorcycle club. Yeah. Um, Boost Fighters, right? Boost Fighters, yeah, right. Yeah. And, uh, and um, these are guys who, and Jesse Ventura. Yeah. Um, and so these are, these are guys who... Um, can uplift our community, you know, yeah. and give a different, different mindset. You know, when we sat in the United Nations, you know, when I when I wore my cut and sat in the United Nations, um, and that's a powerful statement, yeah, you know. And, awesome. and a lot of people don't really understand that, you know, that action is not uh, a single action. It wasn't. Uh, it was an action for the for us as bikers. Like, but people looked. You know, people were always looking and go, "Oh, look at him. He's you know, he's trying to be." Like, bro, when you see a cut on the floor of the United Nations, yeah, that's power for all of us. All of us. That's yes. you know, that's putting forth an image. Who does the most charity work of any community on the planet? Bikers. Mm -hmm. Who raises the most? Money for any uh, for a variety of causes, bikers. No one. There's no community on this planet that raises more funds and supports more nonprofits and toy runs and, and than the biker community. Yeah, that's mean, true. And and so imagine the power if we stopped beefing with each other and hating on each other and and imagine how much power we would have constantly using it. In, in, in that way.
Yeah. You know, it's unlimited. It'd be like a political party almost, like, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or a union, you know, whatever you, way, way a person like that. Yeah, man. But it, yeah, that's what I've been on the whole kick with Demons Row is a unification. And it's like, I'm starting to get people that come on the show and talk that in the outlaw world that you would never hear from, you know? So it's a blessing, man. So um, any last words for the community that you want to drop on them? Just uh, happy that, that people uh, have given us an opportunity, that the dominance you know, all over the world, um, which most of them are like, you know, they hear about what we do and most of them are like, go ahead, man, you know, do your thing. You know, we appreciate how you're rolling um, because we do have a lot of respect for the guys that did this before. Yeah. So, you know, um, and, you know, the way we try to conduct ourselves with our cuts the way we try and conduct ourselves in the bike community um, is with that respect. Because there was a time, and we always have to be mindful of this, there was a time when those dudes were wearing those vests and then they'd walk into a town or walk into a restaurant and the cops would be called and people would be, you know, thrown up against a car just for wearing this. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, we have to be mindful that there are guys who, who did this before us. And uh, we, you know, that's sort of the way we try and try and roll in that respectful way, but also with the understanding that we, you know, well, the way we roll is that we we try and just serve our our indigenous communities, um, and hope that uh, we'll just be able to continue that work, you know. And and we, you know, at this at this point, um, we've been able to do that, and so you know, I, I thank the biker community and, and, and as a whole. For and, you know, embracing what we're doing. Of course, you know, there's always you know a few haters there here and there. Yeah. You know, but yeah. you could, but again, you know, for in, embracing what we were doing and just giving us that support, like yourself, you know. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Man. Thank, Thank you for saying that.